Hi, this is a two-part video that simplifies interfacial phenomena and surfactants. Pharmaceutical dispersions can range from simple chemical molecules to complex protein structures. These dispersions interact with the interface in different ways. An interface is the boundary between two forms of matter. Take a look at this beaker. The boundary between the glass beaker and the water is a solid liquid interface. The area where the air meets the water can just be called surface. This is a simple picture. However, an interface isn't always just one layer thick. So let's take another drawing. If we have an A phase and a B phase, the interface between them has different properties than the A and the B. Understanding these properties helps us understand the pharmaceutical dispersions like suspensions, emulsions, and colloids. Have a look at the speaker containing a suspension. The particle is a solid and the bulk is the liquid. The boundary between them is the interface. Even something so small like the interface between each and every particle can affect dis a dispersion's physical stability. So as you know th from thermodynamics, a closed system wants to reduce its energy. Okay, so if you have like a closed system with high energy, it eventually will want to reduce its energy. And we know that in, uh, let's say, a suspension, if we reduce the particle size, we increase the surface area. So these small particles in a suspension have a huge surface area, and that means they have a huge or <laughs> they have a lot of surface free energy. So just by definition, surface free energy is the work required to increase the surface area by one meter squared. It's called surface energy because energy is proportional to the size of the free surface. So, you know, in plain terms, if you have a larger free surface, you have a higher surface free energy. And again, to have a larger free surface, we can do that by particle size reduction. So how can we do that? By reducing the surface area, we reduce the energy. So let's, let's take the speaker, for example, okay? And these small, small particles want to reduce their energy. So what they do is they come closer and closer together by forming, you know, that forms larger and larger particles. And this then helps it reduce its surface area, reduce its surface free energy. And if they become so clumped up together, it eventually leads the system to physical instability. So if this was a bottle of paracetamol suspensions, you can't shake the particles back. In the previous example, we talked about how molecules clump together to reduce their energy. In this example, I'll illustrate how the solution itself can contract to also reduce its energy. In this beaker, there's this molecule in the bulk of the phase. So it's surrounded by so many other particles. And then another molecule in the surface of the phase. As you can see, it doesn't interact with as many particles because it's at the surface. This means that it has more potential energy to spare. So it has more energy than or compared to the molecules in the bulk. So to compensate for that energy difference and for the system to reduce its energy, the molecules in the bulk pull pull inwards the molecule at the surface. This causes the surface to contract and the system to reduce its energy. This is a problem. We don't want our dispersions to reduce their energies and become unstable. The solution is to add something to reduce the interfacial energy without clumping the molecules together or changing the system. To do this, we add surfactants. Surfactants are amphiphilic meaning they are both water-loving and water-hating molecules. Surfactants are found in your shampoo. It's what makes your shampoo all fo foamy and lathery. Surfactants work by being able to attach to a polar and non-polar region. And another plus is that they reduce the surface free energy. There are many different types of surfactants. Some of them are more lipophilic or hydrophilic than others, and they have a specific HLB, or hydrophilic-lipophilic balance depending on the dispersion we add them to. Generally, surfactants are divided into soluble surfactants and insoluble surfactants. Within this 
division, we can further classify them based on their functional groups, like anionic, cationic, amphoteric, and non-ionic surfactants. The thing about soluble surfactants is that they usually form a monolayer. This monolayer can be named gaseous, expanded, or condensed based on the distance between the surfactants. So here we have a tightly packed surfactants at the interface, aka a condensed state monolayer. This beaker containing a suspension has surfactant to reduce its surface free energy to avoid aggregation of the molecules. If we add more and more surfactant, we eventually reach the critical micelle concentration, or the CMC. Here, the surfactants will stop behaving as a monolayer and start becoming micelles. Adding even more surfactant past the CMC won't reduce the surface free energy anymore. That's all for this video. Stay tuned for part 2, where we go more in depth about surfactants. Good luck and thanks for watching.